I have started the process of drying off Penelope. She is supposed to calve sometime, we think, in April. That's what the vet figured, was that she was due sometime in April. So we are going to dry her off. Usually you want to give dairy cows um, about two months dry period, which means uh, where they're not milking. But we're going to give her three months at least because she's been in lactation for over a year now. And we want to give her a nice solid break before she calves. What I'm doing is I didn't milk her yesterday and I'm going to continue this every other day milking for about a week until I stop completely and then hopefully we'll have no issues. If you've been following our journey with Penelope, you know that she had mastitis about a month ago and we believe that we've got it cleared up. So I'm hoping that we don't have any issues going into the dry period, but we're gonna keep a close eye on her just in case. I'm sure this nice lovely mama is looking forward to a break and honestly i'm kind of looking forward to a break from milking too i got lots of other stuff that i got going on and it'll be nice um, going into the very coldest months of the year here we've had a pretty mild winter so far but historically january february march tend to be the colder months in our area of the world so it's going to be nice not to have to milk then So because Penelope now has, unfortunately, a history of mastitis, um, we're going to be doing some things that are going to be preventative care in that regard. So when we're drying her up, we are going to be making sure that her bedding and her shelter is really clean all the time. So cleaning it out, putting fresh straw in is going to be really important. Also, we're going to be running CMT on her, probably at least once or twice before we officially dry her up, just to be on the safe side. If you don't know what a CMT is, it basically stands for California Mastitis Test. And what it is, is it is a, basically a plastic thing that you squirt a little bit of milk into each of the circles, and then you put some of your colorant liquid in, and if it gels up, then it means that the cow has a high SCC count which means somatic cell count. And that is an indicator of the cow having mastitis or some kind of infection up there. So it's just a good thing to use to check to see if they have some kind of thing festering in their udder. And you can tell which quarter it's on. So we're gonna be doing that before we officially dry her up just to make sure that there's nothing going on in there. And yeah, biggest thing is going to be just making sure that she does not have mastitis going into the dry period because that's, from what I've heard, one of the worst things that can happen. It's going to be really sad <laughs> not to have her fresh milk for the next three months or so and probably even a little bit longer because we probably won't want to be drinking the milk when it's full of colostrum. That is the plan. Penelope has her heifer calf that we grafted on, Phoebe. I posted a video about her about a month or so ago, maybe a, two months ago, where we put the weaning ring in her nose and weaned her, and now she's been in a separate pen for the last couple of months, away from her mom. They can still see each other through the fence and all that. But um, once she's actually officially dry, I might attempt putting them back together to see if they can be put together. Because if they have to be housed separately for the rest of their lives, and Phoebe's always going to try to suck on her, which is my worry, then that would not be great, and I would have to come up with a new plan. I've been busy preserving as much of our dairy products as I can by making cheese and butter. It has been a lot of work to do all that with as much other stuff we have going on, but it has been really fun to learn and experiment with that. And I think going into our next lactation, I'd really like to try out some new types of cheeses and stuff, like some hard cheeses. I'd like to get a cheese press and I'd like to get an actual butter mold, just because I think that would be cool to have nicely shaped pretty butter <laughs> and be able to know exactly how much of it is in each little block because right now i'm just shaping it kind of however however it comes out is how it goes in my freezer yeah so what has been my experience with having a dairy cow now adding a dairy cow to our homestead well it's been a really 
great and challenging experience at the same time. It's very demanding. It demands you to have consistency. Even when you don't feel like milking, you still have to milk. But I will say I learned a lot. So I remember when we were talking about getting a Jersey cow or a dairy cow of some kind years ago before we ever even had our homestead. And, you know, you'd always, always, always have those people that they got to tell you their opinion, even though you didn't ask for it. So I remember people would always tell us, oh, you can't get a dairy cow. You'll never have a social life. You'll never be able to leave the farm again. You have to milk them twice a day, every day at the exact same time, every single day. And I will say after having a dairy cow for almost a year and milking her, that is not true. That is not true. She, when we got her, she was already four months into her lactation. She didn't have a calf on her. They had taken it away and they were bottle feeding it. So when we got her, we didn't really have much of a choice, but other than to just milk her every day. However, you know what? There are things that happen in life and situations come up where you're not going to be able to milk every single day or at least every day at the same time. So we knew that in order for us to keep a dairy cow on our homestead, we were going to have to come up with a plan where we could not be as consistent with milking. So what we did was we went and bought a beef bottle baby from a family member of mine. She was a heifer to another heifer or a twin to another heifer, I should say. So we got ourselves a little Charlay Simmental heifer calf that we grafted onto Penelope. That was a bit worrisome because she was already four months into her lactation and I wasn't sure if she's ever even raised a calf before because I don't know if she just had the calf taken off her immediately. So that was a little bit of a risk to take, but what we did was we put a flank rope on her and we did supervised nursing sessions with the calf for about two days. And she accepted that calf really no problem. And they've been inseparable ever since. So we were able to calf share and we could milk her, honestly, whenever we wanted. If we separated the calf off for a good 12 hours, then we could milk her. And we'd still get about a gallon and a half, which to some people might seem like not a lot of milk. That's not a huge producer, but we didn't care. That was still more than enough milk for our family. I will say, though, the big, big, big downfall to calf sharing is that the mama knows how to hold back that cream. She does. We would be getting, like, a little tiny bit of cream on the top of our gallon of milk, and it was not even enough to make butter with. So we had sometimes not even enough for our coffee. So that was depressing, having a cow that was eating all this beautiful lush summer grass and we could have been getting that amazing yellow butter but she just wasn't giving us any cream and honestly she still never gave us any cream until we fully weaned that calf off of her completely so going into the future i don't know if we really decide that that butter and that cream and the products we can make with the cream is of extreme importance to us then we're gonna have to not capture but with all we had going on with a new baby and pregnancy and all the projects that we had going on on the homestead, having a calf was a huge lifesaver and I do not regret it. Um, Penelope's been an amazing cow to work with. She's been one of those cows that you can tie her up with a halter and literally milk her anywhere on the farm. You do not have to put her in a stanchion or anything like that. We have had a few conversations, I'll put it. <laughs> she has that typical Jersey attitude. Usually she's great, but there are some times where she decides to be a little ornery shit. So we've had some conversations. She's worn the flank rope a few times. She's gotten a few smacks here and there for headbutting. She, when she came to us, she was a real bad headbutter. And so we've had to have a few uh, heart to hearts about not doing that and she's gotten a lot better so that's been good that she's gotten better because it was not fun <laughs> yeah um other than that like she's been a really really great cow she can you can milk her in the barn you can milk her outside you can milk her in the in the wind in the pouring rain like she's just great 
We never did get around to actually getting a milking machine. We've just been doing it by hand and that's been fine. So I think next year my goal is to get a milking machine. Not because I can't milk by hand, but just because it gives you the freedom to, you know, if you do have someone else come milk, then they can machine milk. It takes quite a while to milk out a cow by hand if you're not used to doing it. It's not necessarily that you have to have a whole ton of strength in your hands. Yes, your hands do get sore and you do need some strength in your hands and you get stronger over time. But really the biggest thing is having the technique and learning how to get the milk out efficiently. So for someone else to be able to do that, I don't know. I feel like that's a lot to ask of someone. So for us to get a milk machine, I think is important in that regard. And also because it will allow me if I decide one day to milk two cows, then I can have a machine because honestly, I don't want to milk. I don't want to hand milk two cows. Very bad. I just don't. So when we got Penelope, we didn't really have the proper facilities. And that's been the case a lot of the time when we've got animals. So we used our stock trailer for a shelter for her and made a little makeshift pen. And we milked out of that for a couple months until we had something better set up. And now this year, we have made some cross fences, we've put in new gates, we've put in automatic waters with dividers, and yeah, we've done a lot of work to make sure that our system is set up a lot better for our cows and our horses this year. I'm just saying, if you do decide to get a dairy cow on a whim, like we did, you can make it work, but it can be challenging at times, but it is doable. Thank you guys for watching my video. I appreciate you guys tuning in and watching all of our stuff on our channel and liking and commenting and subscribing to our channel helps us to grow and helps us to reach more homesteaders just like you who enjoy content just like this and i know that it can be sometimes difficult to find relatable content in a northern climate about homesteading so that is why we put that out there we love sharing our stories and our journey with you and our mistakes and our successes and we appreciate you guys tuning in for every video we hope that you have a great new year and that 2024 treats you well. God bless and take care. Thanks again for watching. Bye.